Oh god, it's so... It's so fucking cold. This is the last fucking time I'm trusting Tinder pictures. Let's start off with the Jinji Ito collection since I've never been a fan of horror anime because, well, they've never been that... scary. But as a fan of Jinji Ito's very unsettling horror that worms its way into your psyche, I've always thought that a good adaptation of his work was the last bastion of hope for horror anime. I think I've lost all hope now. Alright, the second episode was a lot better, but I think the real problem lies in that his terrifying art just falls a bit flat in this adaptation. If it can even be captured at all. So instead, let's watch this cute little show about babysitters. Baby... Shitter. Babysitters? Baby shitter. Baby shitters. At least, I think these are babies and not adorably reanimated nendroids, and really, what can I say? Japan is back at it again, trying to get their population to breed with a show about babies being absolutely adorable little bastards. Yeah, fuck him up, fuck, fuck again, fuck him up. You know, shows like this that remind me that babies can actually be really cute. When there's not five of them sitting next to you on a 13 hour flight every time, apparently. Wait, my god. And here we see a tech demo of a scene rendered in real time running on the new KyoAni engine. Now let's compare this to shots from the real life engine and as you can see, real life is looking pretty ugly right now. Do we have any questions? Yeah, uh, excuse me, this is a great tech demo but uh, can we expect the plot or characters to be patched in anytime soon? Someone... Someone get this guy out. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this so far. I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, but at the moment, it's just very pretty looking cardboard. Violet at the beginning is bland enough to dilute the taste of sandpaper, and nothing is grabbing me about the plot. The backstory seems way more interesting than what's going on. Just ask them to read the letter back to you and stop trying to play hard to get, you stupid, thirsty, cock-teasing dick mongrel. But I guess I'll still be watching to see if things do pick up in the Kudere adventures of Full Metal Saber. See, the problem with watching a show right after Violet Evergarden is that my mind is now wired to think that everything looks absolutely awful by comparison. So, hold on, I'm just gonna have to bleach my eyes back to normal. Ah! Okay, I think that should do the trick. Oh, Saber, what are you doing here again? Why have you been downgraded to 360p? God, and look at this Saber ripoff. Jesus, they're not even trying anymore. I mean, this just looks like fate. It is fate. It's another fake, guys! It's... It's another fucking fake, guys. You know, as happy as I am that we can add another fake to the small list that already exists... Is it even possible to keep track of where everything fits? But, you know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna let this go. It's just one more fake show to add to the collection this season. No! Why? Why is there a fake show about Shiro cooking food? Where does this fit in the timeline? Oh god, it's my fucking infotable too! Why are you infotable? Don't you have Heaven's Feel to be working on? This is not what we meant when we said we wanted more Type Moon from you! Now this... This I can get behind though. I don't know why I enjoyed Overlord Season 1 as much as I did, being an isekai about a guy trapped in a video game, and yes, I did get bored halfway through saying that sentence. But being able to watch a ridiculously overpowered villain try to take over the world was just the nice popcorn entertainment I needed just before I got bored of the concept. So I am very much looking forward to Season 2. I'm also obligated to say that Bookwalker are doing an Overlord giveaway now, and you can win this Nendroid by buying any of the Overlord light novels and using coupon code GIGA. Details at the end. And now, coming from the guy who skips openings, comes an opening I will not skip because holy shit, this track is a fucking tune! Are you listening to this right now? Oh, and the show has something to do with stopping time and a giant stand or something, but can we just jam to this opening a bit more? How about I just shut up and let it play? Yo, Sydney, what's that? It's my fucking jam! And now, for my secret technique. <laughs> you are already gay. Nani? Citrus should be an essential part of everyone's diet. Studies have shown that consuming the right amount of citrus can give you health benefits such as a healthy heart, reduced risk to cancer, healthy skin, a raging boner. Common types of citrus fruits that are healthy for you can include Oranges, lemons, incest, lesbian incest, lesbian sexual assault sister incest, 
and grapefruits. Is this it? Is this the next evolution in the trash genre? I mean, we've had Yuri's, we've had Emoto's, but now, get ready for... Yuri Moto's! No. This is going even further. Finally, after all these years, we have perfected the forbidden formula. Yuri, incest, NTR, rape. By your powers combined, I am Captain Smart! Guys, I I think I'm starting to realize this isn't an anime about oranges. Whoa, look how much she got! Is that you? So we got the Dream Daddy anime adaptation we never asked for with a neck to challenge Welcome to the Ballroom's Crown. And a lot could have gone wrong in a plot about a schoolgirl crushing on a man double her age, but I actually really like her. She was weird but adorably weird. And you know what? Right now I'm actually just rooting for her to shoot for her dreams and hopefully make it. You know, I honestly think that Boss Baby totally deserves the Oscar nomination over a silent voice. It's just fair, you know, for an award like this. Oh, did you hear they're doing the anime awards again this year? I do hope my favorite wins again, like when I voted for Yuri and Ice. And here it comes. It's it's the edge of the season. I mean, what is this even? Kimono Friends Gone Wild. <laughs> You know what? Let's just clear our palette with a nice inoffensive anime about shogi. Uh-oh. I don't think I like where this is going. Oh for fuck- I was just trying to watch an anime about shogi! That's the thing about anime lollies. I get older, and they... They just keep getting fucking younger, don't they? Jesus. Christ, why the fuck do you keep doing this anime? <laughs> well, thanks Madhouse for reminding us about No Game No Life. You know, just in time for you to never give us season two. Okay, I gotta be honest. You know that feeling when you think you could be watching something that turns out really special? This series was it for me. It's rare that I find a show that captures the youthful optimism, camaraderie, and adolescent spirit as well as this does. Every episode is brimming with energy. The cast is some of the best chemistry I've ever seen, and it's incredibly inspiring for anyone who's ever wanted to undertake an adventure in their lives but never had the courage to. Really capturing that free-spirited journey. I have really high hopes for this, not only because there are a few phrases that can get me going as much as This is a Madhouse original anime. But every episode thus far has hit all the right points with absolute ease. Of course, with high school girls going to the desolate, harsh environment Antarctica is, I see absolutely no issue with a bunch of young children exploring an uninhabited and dangerous world by themselves. Hey, hold on a second! Hey, Makoto Shinkai! Is that you? Alright, it's time for Pop Team Epic. I don't really know what to expect, but let's see what this is about. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's a show about ramen. I wonder what this is going to be like. What? Hey, Makoto Shinkai! Is that you? Oh, hey, look, it's an older man groping a younger woman in the workplace. Well, this is sure to go down well in 2018. Oh my god, guys. I think... I think I found her. This girl of the season. I think... I think I'm gonna claim her. She's mine. Hey! Get off me! I found her first! So this is a news collaboration between A1 Pictures and Studio Trigger, which you can really tell, because it looks like they've taken Trigger's style and sanded off all the edges. And I did want to talk about the mecha designs, which are of course very Star Driver-esque, and how the show feels like it's sorely missing a Hiroyuki Sawano score. I mean, I can't be the only one who's watching these scenes and waiting for a Sawano drop. But, for now, I have something more important to say, and this is for all of us. Since the beginning of mankind, we have strived to innovate. From the first tools that separated us from the animals, to the technology that allows us to defy God, we always push forward. We built faster, we built bigger, we built smarter. Conquered our known world, explored the deepest oceans, shot for the stars. Our limits were only those in our imaginations, as we continued to push what we thought would never be possible. 
science fiction became science fact. Nothing was impossible if we could dream it. And we did. Which is why today, I am proud to present the crowning achievement our species has met thus far. We at Thought Engineering are proud to present Butt Control. A revolutionary control system where you can pilot and make a bike having a girl's butt. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. A lot of the source material for the shows I just talked about are available on Bookwalker, including Overlord, as right now they are doing a giveaway for Overlord stuff. You can win this and Android set or some signed boards by purchasing any of the light novels or manga. Use coupon code GIGUP for a discount, which will mean you'd be spending less than $2 to enter. This ends in two weeks on February 12th, so enter while you can. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm going to be off to Japan once again next week. So until then, I've been GIGUP and I will see you all next time.